News every 15 minutes, weather every 10, and sports twice an hour. News Talk KGVO, AM 1290, and now 101.5 FM. You're listening to Montana Morning with Peter Christian. It's deja vu all over again. Good morning, everyone. It's Montana Morning. It's Tuesday, July 15th, 2014. A mostly cloudy sky, a mostly overcast right now. We have 58 degrees in Missoula. Had some rain in the area yesterday, depending upon where you were on the south side of town. Pretty wet last night over the rest of the year. Uh, the community pretty dry so but we have more thunderstorms in the forecast we'll get to that here in just a moment first i need to tell you your uh, your newscast this morning is sponsored by dig it excavating where they bring 30 years of excellence to every job the number to call 214-4292 it was deja vu over the weekend in a virtual replay of an incident that occurred last summer a missoula man has been charged with jumping off the banman bridge and landing on another man, nearly causing him to drown. Here's Paige Pavalone with the Sheriff's Department. It sounds like there were three individuals that were on top of the bridge that were jumping into the water, the river beneath, and a, the first person had jumped off and was underneath the water when a second jumper jumped off of the bridge into the water and landed on the first jumper, causing him injuries. 37-year-old Charles Ament appeared in Missoula Justice Court yesterday and was charged with misdemeanor negligent endangerment, as well as a parole violation, for drinking alcohol while on parole. Babylon said jumping off that bridge continues to be illegal. We really want to drive home the fact that people are getting hurt. A lot of this stuff is happening when people are intoxicated, and we really want people to be cognizant of the fact that this is a very serious situation, and we don't want anybody to get killed. This individual, he sustained some head injuries, and he was knocked unconscious, and he could have drowned. Ament was placed in jail on $5,000 bond. A one-year-old boy was killed when he was struck by a pickup truck as it backed out of a driveway in a Browning neighborhood. The highway patrol said the boy was struck at about 2.40 on Friday afternoon. The child was possibly behind the pickup. The boy's name has not yet been released. The collision still under investigation. 56-year-old John Mulligan appeared in Missoula Justice Court yesterday, charged with stabbing a Missoula man on the Reserve Street Bridge over the weekend. Public Information Officer Travis Welsh says the incident was reported to 911 about 9.30 on Saturday night. 911 was notified of a, a male who had been apparently stabbed uh, on the Reserve Street Bridge. Officers responded and did find a 32-year-old male with uh, a, a wound to his upper leg as well as a left hand. Mulligan, a transient, appeared in Missoula Justice Court yesterday and was charged with felony assault with a weapon for the stabbing and misdemeanor assault for becoming belligerent after his arrest and spitting on the shoes and pants of Corporal Ariana Adams. The victim was taken to the hospital. He was transported to the hospital and was subsequently treated and released. The suspect is, uh, was identified as a 56-year-old homeless man. He was located nearby by officers and placed under arrest. Mulligan's bail was set at $50,000. He was remanded back to the Missoula County Jail. A woman that fell into McDonald Creek in Glacier National Park Saturday died Sunday as a result of the incident. The East German with Glacier Park said the cause of death was drowning. Our initial investigation indicates that a 33-year-old woman from Buckley, Washington, name is Abigail Sylvester, she was with her husband along the creek and she was trying to take a photo. She slipped and fell into the creek. The current swept her downstream. Sylvester's husband jumped into the creek in an attempt to save her, but had to self-rescue himself to the creek bank due to deep and fast-moving water. At the, this location, German wants to remind all visitors to use caution when hiking up glaciers, especially when around bodies of water. There's always a reminder for visitors to use caution around water, and that's, that's any body of water. If it's a lake, if it's a stream, if it's a river. Right now, just with the snowpack that we've had this year, our water is moving quickly. It's cold, it's high at many places, and the rocks, they're always slippery. So please use caution when you're around water. Glacier Park Rangers are conducting an investigation. Congressman Steve Daines has raised more than $1.4 million in the past three months in his fight to unseat Senator John Walsh in the November election. The Republicans' campaign released the fund raising numbers yesterday ahead of a, a July 15th Federal Election Commission deadline. That, of course, would be today. Spokesman Brock Lawrence says the campaign has spent $1 million since May 15th and has $1.7 million on hand. Dane says the campaign has raised $3.6 million since it kicked off in the fall. Walsh announced last week his campaign has raised $1.25 million for the period from April 1st to June 30th and nearly $2.8 million overall. 
Danes, Walsh, and Libertarian Roger Roots. They're campaigning for the seat Walsh was appointed to back in February. And in a related story, a Montana congressman, that's Danes, is asking for changes to a U.S. Air Force proposal that would expand a bomber training site over parts of four states. Steve Danes wants the Air Force to remove from its plans a vast swath of airspace above southeast Montana, northwest South Dakota, and southwest North Dakota. Danes' office said yesterday that the proposed training site threatens to disrupt medical flights and monitoring flights by the oil and gas industry. It requested the changes in a letter to Air Force Secretary Deborah Lee James. A final environmental study on the proposal is currently pending. Montana U.S. Senators John Walsh and John Tester opposed the expansion and have criticized federal officials for not providing enough opportunities for public comment on the matter. Since wildfires in Montana happen every year, the public is invited to an informal discussion about the 48-hour initial interagency response to last year's Lolo Creek Fire Complex. Jennifer Lamana of Fire Safe Montana has details about which agencies will be involved this evening. The Lolo Community Council is our main sponsor, and we're also having the Missoula County Fire Protection Association, Missoula Rural Fire Department, Fire Safe Montana, Bitterroot RCD, Missoula Disaster and Emergency Services, the Lolo National Forest, and the Sheriff's Office. Lamana says attendees will get all their questions answered about the reasoning behind evacuations and other decisions during last year's fires. Why the incident commanders made the decisions they did and just kind of help give a brief understanding of what happened. A discussion of the evacuation process and how decisions were made there and some new tools to make evacuation go even smoother this year. Now that meeting will be at the Lolo Community Center. It's scheduled for this evening from 6.30 until 8 p.m. A road in Yellowstone Park has reopened after it was melted by a hot spot in the ground. Of course, we reported on this yesterday. Last week, park officials had to close Firehole Lake Drive when the hot ground turned the asphalt into a sticky mess. Warm weather didn't help matters any. July is the height of tourist season in Yellowstone, and the closure of the 3.3-mile loop six miles north of Old Faithful kept visitors away from Great Fountain Geyser, White Dome Geyser, and Firehole Lake. They say there's no sign of increased hydrothermal activity in the area. Our news talk time now is 610. News Talk, KGVO. Missoula's official weather station. Partly to mostly cloudy skies with scattered showers and a few thunderstorms this afternoon. Temperatures will top out in the low 80s. Winds will be out of the west at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Slight chance of showers this evening. Lows in the mid 50s. I'm meteorologist Brooke Foster for KECI 13. Thank you, Brooke. Right now we do have a mostly cloudy sky. We've got 58 degrees in Missoula.